uh, it is a great pleasure to uh, be on this uh, uh, first international conference on the global sustainable development with the integration of environmental development, economic development, sustainable development and uh, good governance. So it's uh, a great pleasure for me uh, to be with you this afternoon and uh, I would like to thank the conference organizers, uh, uh, Govind, uh, Professor Govind Hirani and the other management group of uh, Dadabai Institute of Higher Education, Karachi, Pakistan. Uh, so I just would like to uh, share with you a few ideas and insights uh, on this important e event. That is basically um, the global economy is having lots of uh, issues and problems for the past few decades. It may be because of the global economic crisis, it may be because of the political uh, dynamism, political landscape that has been changing over a period of time uh, for the past uh, couple of decades. Now, if you look at the global economy, how it looks like, and uh, we, we have the global uh, economy which is consisting of a uh, little more than 230 countries, sitting within the uh, space of about uh, 500 million square kilometers land, earning the income of uh, uh, about 80 trillion US dollars. Uh, so this is what the group, uh, global economy looks like with the population of about uh, 7.6 billion people living in this planet. Now, how the economy uh, is functioning and who are the contributors for this economy and whether the, uh, is there any discrepancy, is there any deviation between the global economic countries, there are greater inequalities that is existing within the global economy. For instance, uh, we got the global giant like American economy which is uh, contributing more than 20% of the global uh, income. Perhaps it's about uh, more than 20 trillion dollars uh, of money is coming from one country, um, that is America, which is the largest economy in the world. Now, the second is consisting of about uh, China, which is uh, having the income of more than 13 trillion US dollars. So now, together, these two countries could able to contribute uh, little less than half of the global income. So, and if you look at the global economies, uh, the top 10 economies in the world, uh, uh, the third economy is um, Japanese economy, for instance, which has got uh, about 5 trillion US dollars, less than half of what uh, China is having. Now, the other side of the coin, Germany is having about 4 trillion, whereas Indian economy Though Indian economy is always considered to be the third largest economy in terms of purchasing power parity, but in terms of normal nominal GDP, uh, nominal income, the Indian economy is pushed down to the fifth position. So with about three trillion US dollars, and still India is competing with the competitors such as uh, UK and France and so on. So, and Canada, Italy, also the top 10 economies in the world, and Brazil as well. Now, <clears throat> looking into this paradigm, I mean, looking into this economic structures, now, who is the contributors for the global sustainable development? Are we doing enough to, to, to maintain the uh, global sustainability, clean and green technologies that we require and our uh, future generations require? To, to make this uh, world more uh, livable and more sustainable. So now, when we look at the uh, economy and also the size of the economy and the contribution of the pollution to this world is who, who is contributing the largest amount of pollution? None other than America, which is contributing more than 25% of the global pollution to this world. So that is that itself speaks something that uh, the, the large the income, large the economy, a large the pollutant, large the contributor to the pollution to this world. Now we need to uh, fight against this kind of uh, issues because the climate has been shifting every year as we can see is a global uh, climate is changing probably uh, more than one two centigrade uh, temperature has been increasing. Now who is the culprit for this? The global giants like China and uh, 
uh, America, uh, Brazil, UK, France, and some of the industrialized countries, they are the ones who is contributing for these uh, issues. Now, the contribution to eradicate, to mitigate the uh, pollution or to, be, to, 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 to protect the climate, to protect the environment uh, in this world uh, is uh, not proportionately contributed. For instance, America contributes certain amount of money to, to, uh, to address the issues of climate change, but uh, the income that has been contributed, the pollution that has been released is disproportional. So we need to look into this aspect. Now, we do have economies such as India, for instance, which is a, an emerging giant in the world world, and it's also considered to be the fastest growing economy after China for the past uh, couple of years, uh, with about 7.4% uh, GDP in the world. None, uh, no other country in the world, uh, which is big, such as India, is progressing uh, or uh, uh, having such a uh, uh, significant economic growth in this world. Now, the pollution from Indian side is also noteworthy because the trees have been cut down on a regular basis, whereas the trees that have not been planted, and if you look at uh, for every uh, 100,000 people or 1 lakh people in Indian population, the number of trees, not even 2,600 uh, uh, trees that have been planted. Whereas if you look at the other side of uh, countries such as America, countries such as Russia, the population for every person, there are more than 4,000 trees in Russia have been planted, whereas in America there are more than 9,000 trees that have been planted. So now even China also got better position than India and even Pakistan as well. Now we need to look at this issue very, very carefully and everybody needs to plan to be a required number of trees, which, which, which is essential to, to, to make this sustainable development in this world. Now, looking to the Pakistan economy, uh, Pakistan is considered to be the fifth largest uh, populated country in the world. The reason is that, uh, which has already crossed more than 212 million population, so which is just next after uh, in the uh, uh, first largest uh, populated country is uh, uh, China with about 1.4 uh, uh, billion people. Whereas India has secured its second position with 1.3 billion people in this world. Now, the, the other uh, thirdly largest populated country is America with the over 330 million people uh, and Indonesia probably close to 250 to 270 million people. So now Pakistan is also getting close to Indonesian population. So now the population growth rate of uh, Pakistan is also steadily increasing. Uh, now, that is the uh, rank uh, of Pakistan in the world. Now, economically, if you look at the economic figures, uh, as far as the nominal GDP is concerned, Pakistan is occupying uh, uh, 24th position in the world uh, in terms of purchasing power parity, whereas in terms of uh, the nominal income, it is occupying 33rd position in the world. So, meaning that uh, although uh, uh, Pakistan is uh, one of the leading economies in this world, uh, uh, probably remain uh, in one of the top uh, 11 or 12 countries, uh, large countries in this world. But still, it has got lots of issues, uh, particularly the political uncertainty and the economic uh, crisis that it has been facing over a period of time. The rupee, Pakistan rupee, is also tumbled down to uh, 117 per one US dollar. So that is uh, the exchange rate is also having uh, an issue in the international arena because of the issue that. Uh, uh, the export uh, uh, export income of Pakistan uh, could add only 21 billion US dollars, for instance. Whereas the import of uh, Pakistan is uh, by and large about 48 billion US dollars. So there is a paradigm, there is a huge change in terms of the exchange, uh, uh, the trade deficit. For instance, the trade deficit is more than 20 billion US dollars. So Pakistan needs to address that issue. Now, I thank uh, the organizers once again uh, for uh, giving me uh, this opportunity and then I would like to uh, add uh, uh, at the end in the concluding remarks of my keynote address uh, that um, uh, um, Pakistan needs to uh, address uh, the economic and uh, social 
and also the political uh, issues one by one and so that uh, Pakistan could become one of the uh, leading economies in uh, not only Southeast Asia but also in the world. Now given this uh, uh, the fact that uh, the, the Dadabai Nauroji Institute of Higher Education would also contribute uh, producing uh, 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 top rated intellectuals and uh, um, create the intellectual capital for Pakistan and also to the global economy. So I wish you uh, all success for this uh, two days event, uh, May 7th and 8th of uh, uh, two, 2008. And uh, so I wish you good luck for the, all the remaining days that uh, for the presenters and for the organizers, for the audience and for the students and everybody. So I thank you once again uh, for uh, providing me this opportunity and I wish you good luck. Uh, so at the end, I probably, uh, I didn't mention myself that uh, this is Professor uh, Ravinder Rena. I'm a professor of economics uh, uh, working currently at uh, the Northwest University Business School, Northwest University in South Africa. And also I'm the professor of uh, economics and research methodology in uh, Monarch Business School uh, uh, in Switzerland. And thank you once again and good luck to you. Good afternoon.